What's going down, everybody? It's your man, Pro Diggy, from the Chaos Crew, but you can call me Diggy if you like. And I'm doing something really, really different here for you guys. Um, obviously, it's not a gameplay, as you can see, my Windows 7 is up. Uh, I'm going to do a quick tutorial for you guys because I get a lot of questions on how to, you know, make commentaries and edit videos and all this stuff or whatever. So I'm just going to show you how I do it and you could take from it what you want. Maybe, um, you know, you can change some things. Or you learn a few things or whatever. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. Like I said, I know it's a little different, but fuck it. You know, like I said, you guys ask questions, so I'm here to answer them. Okay, so first things first is I'm going to open up my Sony Vegas Pro 11. Uh, some of you guys might not have 11. It just came out. Uh, you might have 9 or 10, but for the most part, everything's just about the same. Um, it's not going to be something where you're like, oh my god, I have 9, how do I do that? Most of this stuff is uh, pretty much basic between 9, 10, and 11. I don't know anything previous to 8 because I wasn't using it at that point. So, first things first, we have a brand new project here. As you can see, it's completely empty. There's nothing going on here. Um, for uh, One thing I would do, depending on your video card is for the preview window, I would leave it at preview auto. It might not look that great when you're watching it, but hopefully you'll be able to see like what's going on and stuff. I know some people that don't have the settings correctly have a hard time seeing what's happening while the video's playing and they're trying to commentate uh, because there's lag and stuff like that. So I've been able to figure out how to get rid of the lag and everything. And uh, one thing would be to have it set for preview auto. Now, uh, first things first is we got a new project here. So I just wanna show you what the project settings should be. Uh, when you uh, go into Sony Vegas, you go down here, File, Properties, and then they have a preset for uh, this 720 by 60 p 59 uh, frames per second. So you want to make sure that you select that one. And uh, this is what the settings should look like, I believe. If not, if something's a little bit different, just make sure it matches this. Uh, for the pixel format, I leave it at 8-bit because when you go to 32-bit, I've noticed that it's, uh, you know, you got some lag and stuff like that. So leave it at 8-bit. It's not going to make a difference on the actual render. It's just for what you're doing now. Uh, for uh, resolution rendering quality, you want it best. Uh, the motion blur is Gaussian. Deinterlace method is going to be blend fields. Uh, you do not want to adjust source media to, be to better match project or render settings. You don't need to worry about that. Um, so that's pretty much that for the video. The audio... Uh, I go with stereo, 48,000 hertz, and 24-bit uh, depth for the audio. Uh, as far as the resample and stretch quality, of course, leave that at best. Um, the ruler, summary, audio, CD, you don't need to worry about any of that stuff. These are the two things you need to worry about here is the audio and video. Now, once you've got these settings correct, just click start project, uh, start all new project with these settings, hit apply, hit OK. You'll never have to do that again. Just leave it the way it is. Okay, now... Let's say I'm going to do a commentary, okay? So I'm going to go to my Explorer here, and uh, I've got a whole bunch of files and shit over here. So I'm going to go to my PVR captures. I'm going to go in here. Let's say I wanted to do a, I don't know, an MW2 thing or whatever, okay? So uh, I want to do this trailer park. So I'm going to just drag that down in here, okay? And uh, basically, this is already kind of cut, ready to go. You know, let me, uh, let me get rid of this one here and... Uh, do one that I might actually have to kind of edit a little bit. Let's see, what about this one? Okay, see this one right here. So there's a lot of uh, like kind of beginning, just like loading up the game and stuff like that. I usually start it right where it's like getting into it. So I'll click to about where it's at, maybe move it back just a hair, depending on what uh, I'm doing here. Uh, but I, as you can see now, I've got like nine seconds and stuff. So I might even move it a little more forward and get to where it's counting down to about two, uh, something like that. Let's see if I can get it over. Okay, like one. That's fine. Okay, so then I would just drag this over, line it up, move it back. So now this is where my project's going to start. It's going to start right here. And uh, <clears throat> basically what I would do if I was going to record a commentary, I'm just going to go down here, insert an audio track. And uh, there's a couple of settings here that's going to be different for everybody depending on your sound card. But if you right-click, um, you'll have your input here. You want to make sure that you're selecting your mic as your input. Um, as far as the output goes, uh, it should be fine from the beginning, and uh, that's pretty much that. See, I have an Mbox, but currently I'm not using the Mbox because I'm using it to record uh, in a different program, so I don't have the Mbox in uh, Sony Vegas. But I have different settings here, and you guys will probably have different settings too. So you'll just kind of you might have to play with that a little bit, but that's pretty much uh, how that goes. Now, that's pretty much that for uh, the recording track. You would just hit Arm for Record. You hit record down here and it'll start recording your voice and you just kind of go along with the gameplay and, and record. 
if you do like I do, where you actually pay attention to it. If you're just rambling on about something, then I guess you don't really have to watch it, but there it is for you to do so. Okay, so that's pretty much that. Once I'm done recording a commentary, of course, I'm going to, like, you know, edit it. Like, if it goes a little over, I'll throw some stuff in to uh, fill up the gaps. And uh, if it needs to be shortened towards the end or something, um, I can edit that stuff out. Like, for example, let's say here... uh, before we do that, actually, let's do this. Okay, first things first is once I've, I'm done recording the commentary and everything, what I do is I start putting in my color corrections and things like that. Now, if you notice up here, you see these black lines, some black lines around the actual gameplay here. First thing I do is I go to this event pan crop on the video. You click that, and then what you're going to do is, I kind of got this smushed a little bit, so here we go. Okay, now... <clears throat> You want to make sure these are selected here because you want to lock the aspect ratio because when you uh, when you move it in, you want it to move the whole thing in, not just a piece of it. So what you would do is you just click on a corner, you just drag it in just a little bit, and as you can see in the preview, it zoomed in just a little bit, got rid of those black lines. Um, I already have a preset for this right there, and it already kind of takes care of that for me. So once you guys get it right, you can just hit save. You just type a little name here, hit save, and then you'll have that forever. So you can just go to that really quick. So now I've got that done. Okay, now, as far as video effects, I use color corrector and I use sharpen. A lot of people use a lot of different stuff or whatever. This is what I have found works best for me. Some people put in color curves and all this other stuff. What I've found with color curves is it seems to make the dark spots too dark and the light spots too light. And I've played with it a lot. So um, with the color corrector and the sharpen, I think I get a really clean look and I don't have to do a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, for color corrector, that's the first thing that I put. Now, I already have presets for this. So you have Black Ops and MW2. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, for MW2, I uh, it's just a little bit of a tweak. It's a little bit... I think I made MW2 just a little bit darker. See, if I, uh, if I take it and I just drag it on here, as you can see, you see how it changed? If I just uh, un uncheck it here, do you see the difference? It's like kind of gray and fuzzy, and just by adding that, it's like, wow, look at those colors now. Okay, so um, this is the Black Ops one. Now, if I go to the MW2 one, you'll see the you'll see a slight difference. Let's see, okay, there's MW2, there's Black Ops, MW2, Black Ops, very slight difference, but I just kind of think that this one looks best for MW2, just a little bit darker. Okay, so these will be the settings for that. Um, you can basically put in whatever you want. Like you could add, you could just drag in the default one or whatever. And then all you do is you just change the settings to match this and you'll get what I do for MW2. Um, you basically just plug in these numbers and that's it. Basically, just to give you a quick look here, if I start changing these things, you'll see what happens on the screen. So if I change the saturation, it's gonna really saturate the colors a lot. Um, or if I bring it down, it's going to basically kind of remove the colors, make it black and white. So that's what the saturation does. Um, and I found a pretty good balance of the saturation with my settings. Now, that for the gamma, it has to do a lot with brightness and darkening. Uh, the gain, kind of the same thing, but it's kind of more like brightens as a whole or darkens as a whole, as you can see there. And then the offset, kind of the same thing. It just, it just, It's different sections of the actual clip that it's kind of lightening and darkening, but... So if we do this, and there we go. There's my MW2 stuff. So those are the settings for MW2. These are my settings for Black Ops. Just a very slight thing here. MW2, Black Ops. Not much of a difference, but just a little bit. Okay, so now I've got my MW2 um, <clears throat> color correction on there. I'm going to go down and I go to Sharpen. Now, Sharpen for, other, for previous versions is just going to be zero. That's fine. Leave it at that. For 11, they've changed it to where the default is 0.5 which is what zero was in nine and 10 and stuff. So that's why I just kind of leave it like that. Now you can see the difference between with sharpen on and off. Off, notice the blur. Turn it on and it really just kind of makes everything really crisp, makes it pop out, looks really sexy. So um, that's basically as far as color corrections and stuff, that's all I do. A lot of people want to put uh, color curves on there. And I'll show you what color curves does just to show you. Okay, so you would take color curves, and a lot of people, what they do is they take this one, and they kind of move it up here, and then they take the bottom one, and they kind of move it down to about in this region. Now, I think it just looks better without it. 
See, that's without, that's with. So, you know, I mean, to me, that's my preference. Like, if you notice, it kind of lightens the lights and darkens the darks. And I don't really like that very much. So what I do is I just don't have it. Um, and, but to each his own. You know, whatever you guys want to do is fine. Um, this is starting to get a little long here, so I want to try and hurry this up. But there's just a lot of stuff that I want to let you guys know about. Uh, okay, so let's actually open a project that I've done. Uh, okay, let's do this one. <clears throat> just so you can see all the stuff that I do to make a commentary. Okay, so here we go. This is my... Uh, road to mw3 now i made these things in photoshop here uh, you can see if i move it forward a little bit okay um i made these overlays uh you know for stalker and stuff like that to actually go over the gameplay and stuff so i had to put those in right where they're supposed to go um here's the actual video here's the intro here's the outro here's a little thing that i put in to uh just kind of take up space and stuff uh while there was no more gameplay because i kind of went over and then I've got my uh, my intro and outro audio over here. And I have that on a separate track for a reason. Because the gameplay is at negative 29, as you can see here. Um, to make sure that the bullets and stuff aren't just, like, overpowering my voice and everything. But for the intro, I want the intro to be, you know, pretty loud. And then over here, I want it to be lower because I'm talking. So I basically what you do is you right-click. And you go insert remove envelope and you make a volume envelope. And what it does is it makes this blue line straight across. And then you just double click an area. You double click another area. And then you just take the second one and you drop it down. And then it does that. Now the reason it didn't drop down like this is because uh, I've actually already got another thing here. So it's going to go back up to this dot. But um, generally it would look the way it looked before. I actually added these other two. Let's see if I can get rid of these real quick. All right, there we go. Nope, one more. Uh, boom okay so that's how I do it and uh that way the like I said the the intro or outro audio is not overpowering my voice which is right here and then you like I said you just kind of have to mix everything so I got my game volume at 29 or negative 29 I've got my commentary audio at uh, negative 4.5 and then I've got um the uh, background for the intro the music for the intro at negative 5 and that's how I get a good mix of things you guys will have to play with that stuff of course but um Basically, this is what a general commentary looks like for me. You know, I've got my intro, got my gameplay and commentary. Uh, if I have to fill in some shit, there it is. And then I've got my outro. And that's pretty much it. <clears throat> now, this is where most of you are, are probably going to really want to know. Um, I'm going to get into my render settings. Now, I've, I've done a lot of trial and error. I've done, a lot, I've done a lot of watching other people's videos on this stuff or whatever. And I found these to be the best that I can come up with for the moment. Um, there's probably a couple things I could change to make it better, but for now, this is pretty damn good. It's pretty clean. Most of the videos come out really nice. Okay, so <clears throat> this is what you guys want to do. Okay, so say you've got everything done, okay? What I do is I like to select the end, and I drag it all the way across like that because I want it to render just this loop region. You might not have to do this, but I feel safer knowing that it's going to render just to this end right here. It's not going to go a second over or two seconds over and just be black and silent. It's just going to render from the beginning of the commentary to the end of the commentary, so I like to do that. Now, you'll go up here to File. You'll go to Render As. Now, for uh, 9 and 10, it's going to be different than this. 11, they've changed it just a little bit, but it's not... At first, it looks funny, but I figured it out. Okay, so first things first is you'll go to Browse, and this is where you pick where you're going to save it to. So you pick whatever folder, you know, you want to go to like here and go to this or that or whatever. And um, then you select your file name or whatever, and then you'll hit save. Okay, now what you want to do is these are the settings. These are what's really important. Now, I've made one, obviously, you can see called YouTube New. But it's going to be a main concept AVC slash AAC, which is an MP4 file or MPEG4. Now, they have a preset here you can start with, if I'm not mistaken. I think you can start with Internet HD 720p. Basically, it doesn't really matter because what you're going to do is you're going to make it look like this anyway. So basically, just pay attention to these settings because this is what you're going to be doing. No matter what template you start off with, as long as it's in the MP4 section. <clears throat> okay, first things first is make sure include video is checked. Custom frame size 1280 by 720 you do not want to allow source to adjust frame size. Profile is baseline frame rate. This is important. You want it to be 60 frames per second. 
Call of Duty is recorded in 60 frames per second. If you do not render in 60 frames per second, a lot of times you're going to get frame drop. I was having that problem. I figured it out by uh, bumping this up to the 60 frames per second frame rate. So do that. Um, allow, allow source to adjust frame rate. Do not have that checked. Okay, pixel aspect ratio. You want it at one. Number of reference frames, four. This is very important. You want to use the deblocking filter. Some people don't know about this, but if you don't use it, you'll get these kind of blocky squares on your video that makes it a little bit blurry and stuff. When you put the deblocking filter on, it just makes it look a lot smoother, a lot cleaner, a lot crisper. So you want to make sure that's on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, for the bitrate, in a tutorial I saw it said variable, and they just said to go with that, so I was like, fine, whatever. Um, so just go with this, because that's what I do, and I, they didn't give me an explanation, so whatever, I'm just sticking with it. So go to variable, you want maximum at 14 million, average at 14 million. Now this is something new to Sony Vegas 11. Usually it'll render using CPU only in previous versions, but they've added GPU rendering. So I have it set to use GPU rendering if available. And what that does is GPU stands for graphic, eh, graphics processing unit. And what it basically does is it, it lets your video card help with the render as opposed to putting the whole load on your CPU. So I think it actually helps with rendering, makes it cleaner, maybe. Um, probably helps it render a little faster because I've noticed my videos are rendering a little bit quicker now. So that's pretty cool. So if you have that, go for it. If not, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, now in audio, um, you want, uh, I use 44.1 because that's what CD quality audio is. Uh, I record in 48, but uh, I render out in 44.1. And then for the bit rate, a lot of people use like 128 or 96. I go with 192 because it's not a, diff a real big difference in the actual size of the file. But it is really clean, and it sounds really nice, so I just kind of leave it at that. You probably wouldn't be able to tell too much of a difference between 128 or 192 or 256 or 320, but I just go with 192 because I feel comfortable with it. I like the way it sounds, blah, 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 etc. Okay, um, as far as system goes, this is something that I believe is with Vegas 11. You can check the GPU. It says that it's a, that CD, CUDA is available, or CUDA, which is part of their graphics uh their GPU rendering. So my, my video card is able to use GPU rendering is basically what that's saying. So that's great. Okay. Project. This is important. You want to make sure that your video rendering quality is best and the stereoscopic 3d just use project settings. That's fine. And then once you have all these settings here set properly, then you want to save it. I have it set as YouTube new because I had a previous one. So, um, since I changed it, I made a YouTube new and that's the one that I use now. So that's pretty much that. And then you would hit render and it's going to render out. It'll probably take, uh, for me, uh, for this video, like this is about a six and a half minute video, maybe like six minutes and 40 seconds. I believe it took me about 35 minutes or so, something like that to render this out. So that's not too bad. And it came out pretty clean. So I think that's pretty much it. We went over the, uh, the event pan crop, the color corrections, the how to record stuff how I do this, mixing the audio, the render settings, project settings. I think that's it. We're pretty much done, guys. I know this was long, and I hope that it wasn't boring. I was just trying to show you guys. You know, this isn't going to apply to everybody. Not everybody is doing commentaries and stuff, but I know there are some of you out there that watch me that do commentaries and things like that or whatever. And, uh, you know, maybe this video will help at least, you know, a couple of you guys out. So that's pretty much what I'm doing this for. Even if I help out one person, it made it all worth it. Um... And I guess thanks for sticking through and watching this 20-minute uh, video on how to do all this shit. But anyway, this has been your man, Pro Diggy, from the motherfucking Chaos Crew. But you can call me Diggy if you like. Don't forget, as always, to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in my sights.